Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Please reflect on our entrance hymn, Here I Am, Lord. Praise to God on the occasion of the blessing of this beautiful image of Blessed Michael McGivney for public veneration and thanksgiving for his faithful service and witness and his recent beatification. In blessing an image such as this, the church presents it for public veneration by the faithful for the following reasons. That when we look upon this representation of one who has followed Christ faithfully, we will be motivated to seek the city that is to come, that we will learn the way that will enable us most surely to attain complete union with Christ, and that as we struggle along with our earthly cares, we will be mindful of the friend and co-heir of Christ, who is also our brother and benefactor, that we will remember how he loves us, is near to us, and intercedes ceaselessly for us as we are joined in marvelous communion. Lord, we bless you, for you alone are holy. And because of your compassion for sinners, you sent into the world your Son, Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of holiness. He sent the Spirit to sustain his newborn church, a voice that teaches us the secrets of holiness a breeze that strengthens and refreshes, a fire that sears our hearts in love. The seed of God that yield a harvest of grace, today we praise you for the gifts of the Spirit bestowed on blessed Michael McGivney and whose image we dedicate and bless this beautiful representation. May we follow in the footsteps of the Lord as he did, keeping before us his example and grow to maturity, measured out by measure. But in the fullness of Christ, we live and move. May we proclaim his gospel by word and deed, by shouldering our crosses daily, expend ourselves for others in your service. And as we carry out our earthly duties, may we be filled with the spirit of Christ and keep our eyes fixed on the glories of heaven where you, Father, receive those who will reign with your Son in the Holy Spirit forever and ever.
I am very grateful to Bishop O'Connell for inviting me to say a few words and for all his support of the Knights of Columbus. I also want to acknowledge Supreme Director Daniel Rossi and greet all my brother Knights in the Diocese of Trenton and your families gathered here today. Dorian and I wish we could be with you in person. Two weeks ago, our founder was beatified in the Cathedral of St. Joseph in Hartford. It was a glorious occasion, one that should give heart and hope to every knight and to every Catholic. Blessed Michael McGivney's legacy has already been a blessing to millions. His beatification has brought the inspiration of his holy life and example to millions more. You honor our founder by celebrating him today and by the good work you do every day. Bishop O'Connell, thank you for commissioning a portrait of Blessed Michael for the Coe Cathedral. Every photo of Father McGivney depicts him in the simple cassock of a priest. So what is very special about the portrait you will soon unveil is that it shows our founder vested to celebrate the holy sacrifice of the mass, the source and summit of our faith and of his priesthood. Now is the time for us all to redouble our focus on Blessed Michael's work and witness as a priest and as founder of our order. I hope you enjoy this celebration and I hope that all of us strive to follow in the footsteps of Blessed Michael McGivney in our journey towards holiness through lives devoted to charity, unity, and fraternity. My brother Knights, I thank you for all that you do in service to the church and to your community. And I pray that Blessed Michael McGivney will intercede for you and your families always. Viva Jesus. I couldn't get him here in person. So I'm very glad he could be with us. He is so thrilled that we're together today uh, as knights here in the Diocese of Trenton. And I am thrilled to be able to be with you on this special occasion. You know, as I learned of Blessed Michael McGivney's beatification, immediately I started to think, what can I do for, for my knights here in the diocese? You are such a great presence uh, and so kind and so generous and so good and so active here in our diocese for so many things. And I'm so very grateful to you, to you who are able to be here. I'm sure the Co Cathedral would be filled if it wasn't for this pandemic. But I'm also very grateful that those uh, uh, who are watching are able to join us and participate with us in this beautiful, beautiful occasion. Our brother knights throughout the diocese and your spouses who are uh, great supporters of the work of the knights. And so together let's begin this Mass in prayer. God of eternal mercy, who set your priest, Blessed Michael, in the church to comfort the suffering and the weary, the lonely and the oppressed with works of charity and a gentle heart, grant that through his intercession we too may become vessels of mercy in our day and so enter into our heavenly inheritance through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, this is the fasting that I wish, releasing those bound unjustly, untying the thongs of the yoke, setting free the oppressed, breaking every yoke, sharing your bread with the hungry, sheltering the oppressed and the homeless clothing the naked when you see them, 
and not turning your back on your own. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your wound shall quickly be healed. Your vindication shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove from your midst oppression, false accusation, and malicious speech, if you bestow your bread on the hungry and satisfy the afflicted, then light shall rise for you in darkness, and the gloom shall become for you like midday. Then the Lord will guide you always and give you plenty even on the parched land. He will renew your strength, and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring whose water never fails. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace one body and one spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, 
one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. And he gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers, to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we will attain to the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God, to mature to manhood to the extent of the full stature of Christ. The word of the Lord. Be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the right sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. I asked, I asked Monsignor Siriani if I could take my mask off. And he said, only if you don't breathe. <laughs> Sorry, Sam. The gospel passage, my dear brothers and sisters, that we just heard, Matthew's Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, presents the Lord Jesus' teaching. Very familiar gospel. Here he's not simply handing on a few noteworthy phrases or quotes for his audience to remember and repeat. No, early in his public ministry, the Lord Jesus is here teaching with authority. And like the ancient Jewish rabbis, 
Matthew tells us that the Lord Jesus sits. We might not think anything of it, but that's the position that's characteristic of authoritative teaching. The teacher sat. And in the Greek version of the text, Matthew uses the phrase, and he opened his mouth. Translated here today as he began to teach them. In the ancient world, sitting down and opening one's mouth are indication uh, that what is about to follow is a revelation of truth. The teacher's most important and most deeply held convictions. And what we have heard, and we hear so often in this gospel passage from Matthew, is the very heart and soul of Jesus' teaching, the plan, the blueprint, huh? we might call it, the mission statement, or the charter for the Christian life. And as Jesus finishes his teaching in his last of these Beatitudes, he offers the motivation for the way of life he teaches. If you do all these things, if you live this way, the way that I've just mapped out for you, because of me, Jesus says, you can rejoice, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Lord Jesus identifies his teaching, what he's saying with his very self. And that's the inspiration for the message. That's the truth the teacher presents, the key to beatitude. It's the thing that makes one blessed. Now, just keep that little thought in mind. The Knights of Columbus of the Diocese of Trenton rejoiced with their brother knights throughout the world at the Vatican announcement that their founder, Venerable Father Michael J. McGivney, would advance one step closer to canonization with his beatification October 31st at St. Joseph's Cathedral in Hartford. Was anyone there? Did anyone have the chance to be there? How beautiful. We watched it on, on television. It was a glorious occasion. And that this historic moment took place on American soil is most fitting since Father McGivney was born in Connecticut in 1852 and ordained in Baltimore in 1877. And he founded the Knights of Columbus back in Connecticut in 1882. It's a classic Catholic and American story. And his is really the story of all of us. It's the story of the Knights of Columbus. Michael J. McGivney was the firstborn of Irish Catholic immigrants, and he grew up in a poor family. And the times, the times were tough. To be an Irish immigrant in the late 19th century could almost be considered a curse. Anti-Irish, anti-Catholic sentiment was everywhere, and it was so strong at the time, especially there in New England, especially there in Connecticut. So was poverty everywhere. Unemployment everywhere. Alcoholism and destitution everywhere among the immigrant populations. And it was in the midst of that population with those experiences that Michael J. McGivney heard God's call to the priesthood. And he never he never forgot where he came from. The poor in spirit, and in fact, those who mourn, the meek, those hungering and thirsting for righteousness, the merciful, the clean of heart, the peacemakers, the persecuted, the insulted, the falsely accused. If these were the criteria on a job description, McGivney was certainly well qualified. They were and they are the criteria for the Christian, for the Catholic, both the clergy and the lay faithful. And their criteria, as Jesus says, because of me. That's what Jesus taught 
and teaches. Michael J. McGivney not only got the job, he lived it, and he reminded his fellow Catholics to do the same because of Jesus. As a seminarian and as a priest, McGivney was regarded as pious, intelligent, good-natured, good-humored, and a dedicated young man. He began his first pastoral assignment as a priest, an assistant pastor at St. Mary's Church in New Haven, Connecticut, and he began it on Christmas Day in 1877. It didn't take long for the people of the area, the people of his parish and beyond his parish, to recognize that this was a hard worker. This was a man filled with pastoral zeal. Do you know, McGivney was drawn to young people, and to the poor, to the immigrant, to the widow, to those with special needs. The people mentioned by Isaiah in the first reading today. And so McGivney set about releasing those bound unjustly and untying the thongs of the yoke and setting free the oppressed and breaking every yoke and sharing bread with the hungry and sheltering the oppressed and the homeless and clothing the naked and not turning his back on his own. Father McGivney believed that if we truly loved God, then we must love those whom God loves. Father McGivney began organizing men of the region into a, a Catholic fraternal organization that would become the Knights of Columbus. You know the story much better than I know it or I could tell it. With mutual and fraternal support, caring for poor widows especially, and families, promoting the Catholic faith, defending the Catholic faith, and showing charity. And these were the defining purposes of that first group of Knights. McGivney saw his nights, as Isaiah proclaimed, like a watered garden, like a spring whose water never fails. You know, when a person enters into any society, that person takes upon him or herself the obligation to live a certain way, to live a certain kind of life. McGivney knew that as a young Catholic man and as a priest, he understood the picture that St. Paul paints in our second reading from the letter to the Ephesians of the kind of life that a person must live when entering into the fellowship of the Catholic Church and within it, the Knights of Columbus. He did indeed see himself, McGivney did, as a prisoner for the Lord. And he urges his brother knights in word and in action to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness and patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you were also called to one hope. With two million members worldwide, the Knights of Columbus, you, you have heard your call. And you are currently the largest fraternal organization, Catholic fraternal organization in the world, contributing, giving over $200 million annually to so many different charitable and Catholic causes, not so least of which as the cause of the promotion of respect for life in all its stages, from conception to natural death. The Knights have donated also over 77 million, and growing, over 77 million hours of service each year in the pursuit of their mission. Now, the portrait of Blessed Father Michael J. McGivney, painted by Sulpician priest Father Peter Gray, here that we have blessed today, that painting 
that is here, as Carl Anderson said, depicts him in the vestments of a simple young priest at Mass. It's a unique depiction of McGivney. At the Eucharist, which was the center of his life, enabling him to do so much good, so the Eucharist must be for all of us. McGivney was only 38 years old when he died in the midst of a pandemic. Isn't that amazing? And that pandemic claimed his young life. And not unlike the pandemic that surrounds us today and has claimed so many lives, he never had the chance to grow old. But he never needed to. In his 38 years, he did amazing things. His young life on earth was incredibly full. In his Sermon on the Mount, the Lord promised that those who live today's gospel would be called blessed because of him. The church now has affirmed that title and applied it to Michael J. McGivney, beatifying him, calling him blessed, recognized that he walked and worked and lived today's gospel, this founder of the Knights of Columbus. And so as the gospel ends today, let me draw these words to conclusion. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward, your reward, following Father McGivney, following the Lord Jesus, will be great in heaven. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, you give us so many great and wonderful gifts. And today we recognize and thank you for the gift of blessed Father Michael J. McGivney. May we continue as his knights to follow his good example as he leads us to Jesus Christ. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Bishop O'Connor, and all church leaders, that God will guide and protect them as they teach, govern, and sanctify the flock entrusted to their care, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all priests, that Father McGivney's life as a holy and heroic parish priest will inspire them to live their vocation with fidelity and evangelical zeal, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the baptized, that we will courageously take up the call to become missionary disciples and contribute to the sanctification of the world, as Father McGivney called the Knights of Columbus to do, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For vocations, that Father McGivney will continue to inspire young people as he did those in his family to answer God's call to the priesthood and consecrated life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the work of the Knights of Columbus throughout the world, that Father McGivney's vision will continue to inspire Catholic men to put their faith into action. We pray to the Lord. For our nation, that the principles of charity, unity, and fraternity, dear to the heart of Father McGivney, might renew and transform our country under God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, for those who are ill, especially members of the Knights of Columbus and their families, especially in this time of pandemic, that they may know the intercession of Father McGivney who ministered during a pandemic in his lifetime and the care of faithful members of the church, we pray to the Lord. 
that our beloved dead, that they will join Father McGivney and the communion of saints surrounding the throne of God in eternal praise. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And in a special way this day, we pray for the Diocese of Trenton and for all our nights here, for those who are watching us through live stream today, that God might bless you for all the good that you do and that you might always know our thanks, we pray to the Lord. God, our Father, hear these, our humble prayers, and grant them, for we make them in confidence and trust in Jesus' name, who is our Lord forever and ever. Amen. For our offertory hymn, please reflect on Pande Vida. My sisters and brothers, please join with me in prayer that these our gifts might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the grace and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Look upon the sacrificial gifts we offer, Almighty God, on this day dedicated to blessed Michael J. McGivney, and grant that we who celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's passion may imitate what it is we now do. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful and strength, with strength ever new, and you offer us sure signs of your love. And that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled, their great example lends us courage, and their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, with all the angels and saints, Lord, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church pressed well the world, and bring her in full to charity, together with France, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, blessed Michael McGivney, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of your Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace.
tempting or we are Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The distribution of communion here at the Co-Cathedral we ask those who intend to receive to just remain in your pew. Priests will come among you and will give you communion. It, uh, and we just ask you to stand. If for whatever reason you cannot receive, we ask you to remain seated or kneeling. The only way of distributing communion here at the Co-Cathedral is in the hand. If you have hand sanitizer, we ask you to use that before you receive Pull down your mask, place our Lord in your mouth, and then re put the mask back. We thank you for your cooperation. For our communion hymn, please reflect on with all the saints.
And let us pray. May partaking at the heavenly table, almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high in all who celebrate this great feast in honor of blessed Michael J. McGivney, that we may persevere in integrity, the gift of our faith, and walk in the path of salvation that you trace before us. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. <coughs> I'd like to say a special word of thanks to <coughs> Monsignor Syria. That cough is an allergy, it's not COVID, so don't get nervous. Uh, to thank uh, Monsignor Siriani for hosting us and Father Brian Butch, his associate here at the Co Cathedral, and also for his willingness to place this painting done by Peter Gray, Sulpician priest, to place it here in our Co Cathedral for the veneration of not only our knights, but all of the faithful in the Diocese of Trenton as we continue to pray for his canonization. Very grateful to Father Monsignor Jim Innocenzi. I don't often get the chance to acknowledge him in public, but he who serves as our vicar for judicial affairs in the diocese, our tribunal, and also as a chaplain for our knights, so grateful to him for his faithfulness, for his presence, for his steadiness in the work that he does in the ministry that he offers to the Diocese of Trenton and to our Knights in the Diocese of Trenton. Also, Father Bambrick, thank you very much. Father is the pastor of St. Al's Parish in Jackson and a faithful Knight. We're glad to have his presence here in a sense representing the priest of the Diocese of Trenton who can't be here today but who would love to have been here with us. I'm grateful to Frank and to Rosemary and to Mary Ann from our communications and media department of the diocese for all that they do and for being with us today to enable us to live stream this to other, our brother knights and their families throughout the uh, diocese. To our brother knight Dan Rossi, Mrs. Rossi, our brother knight Jim Stover, Mrs. Stover, we're so grateful for the leadership and the kindness that you show. To all of the knights who are here, thank you for making this day important to you, important enough to give up your morning to be with us to celebrate. All of the knights who are with us through live stream today, God bless you, God love you. And again, as your bishop, I'm so grateful to you for all that you do and for all that you are here in the Diocese of Trenton. Thanks to our musicians for accompanying us and help us to pray. And so now bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Monsignor always has to have the last word. Did you ever notice that? You should never applaud before someone speaks, never. <laughs> Just more instructions. Because of the COVID restrictions, we are inviting everyone to please exit through those two doors that'll lead you right out into the parking lot. Also, we cannot gather in church, so we will process nights and everything right outside. We have been blessed with a glorious day, and you can greet the bishop at that time from a distance. Thank you very much. Thank you, Monsignor. Thanks very much. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. As we are sent forth, please reflect on with one voice.
Yeah.